Hi guys, good morning. Welcome back to my channel. In today's session, I'll be explaining about the operator ID, access group and access role. So let me give you a brief recap of the sessions that I posted earlier. So we started with an overview of the Pega application. And then I created a new application by using the new application wizard. Uh, the application was for the training application. So today I will be just logging in with the training operator that I have and I'll try to explain you what an operator ID is, um, how access group and access roles are related to the operator ID. So this would be the topic of the today's session. So let's get started. Okay, so I have an operator ID training admin at the rate pega.com. So I'll try to log in to the application using this operator ID. Okay, so this operator ID is defaulted to the app studio. So let me switch back to the dev studio and then we'll get started. Okay. So before getting started, let me try to define an operator ID for you guys. So every time you need to log in into a Pega application, so you need to have an operator ID available for you. Operator ID is what? Operator ID basically will help Pega authenticate if the person who is trying to log in the Pega application is a valid user or not. So it will be a combination of user ID and password. Okay. So if you want to see your operator ID details, there are multiple ways. If you want to see the instances of all the operator IDs present in your Pega application, so you can do that by going to the Records Explorer, expanding the organization category, and under that you see the operator ID. So that is one way. So if you click this, you will be able to see all the instances of operator ID that are present in this particular training application. Other ways, if you want to see the details of the current operator who is logged in, so that you can do that by clicking on this small icon that you see below if you click on it it will give you a menu and from here you can select operator so this will give you the details of the current logged in operator for example if you see i just logged in with this operator id right training admin at the rate pega.com so this is my operator id details if you see there are certain fields like title first name last name full name position phone email and so on right so these are the basic details for example this particular training admin at the rate pega.com is having an email ID this, the full name is this and so on. You can fill in this form with the details of your user or operator who is going to access our Pega application. Then we also have an application access tab. So this basically will tell you that the current operator, the logged in operator is tagged to which all access group. Now what is access group? So access group is another rule type in Pega which will tell you that which application you are allowed to access and what all portals your application has. Okay, so that is a very simplified explanation of access group. So this particular operator training admin at the rate pega.com is currently defaulting to one access group, which is training colon authors. And this access group is pointing to an application called training. Now it is also possible that one single operator ID can be associated to multiple applications. So for example, if this particular training admin has to work on different applications, so that is also possible. All we have to do is we just, we can add additional uh, access group by using the plus icon. So let me show you an example. So let me try to see some other access group that I have. Let's go with booking authors. So booking authors is another access group that is pointing to a different application called booking. So if I try to add an additional access group to this particular operator ID and if I try to save. So that means that this particular operator ID is allowed to work on two different applications. One is the training application and the other is the booking application. Now at runtime, it is also possible for this particular operator to switch the applications. So if you see the current application that we have is the training application, right? Now I want to switch the application and go and work on the booking application. So how is that possible? So you we can do that by coming to the application menu and over here you can see there is a switch application option option and if you want you can just switch between the training and the booking so i can just quickly show this so i selected booking and now my application got changed to booking right so this is how we switch between different applications 
for a specific operator in Pega. Okay, so now let's see what are the other configurations that we can do on the operator ID record. So this was about the profile tab. So we can define the first name, last name, email and other attributes. We can tell what access group an application is pointed to. And you can also have some localization settings. For example, you can set the locale and the time zone for this particular operator ID. So that also you can do by using the, this portion of your uh, operator ID record form. Next, let's go to the work tab. So in the work tab, first you can define the organization structure. So organization structure means which particular organization, division and unit this operator ID belongs to. So that configuration, you can do it over here. For now, my organization chart is correct. So I will not make any change to it. Then comes the team. So what is a team? So team is also known as work group in Pega. Okay, if you hover on this, you'll be able to see what work group does this user belongs to. So work group is basically a group of users working together. In that case, you create a work group and you tag those users to the work group and every work group will be managed by one or more managers or supervisor, right? So this particular operator is defaulted to the work group name default. If you want, you can add additional work groups also by clicking on the plus icon that is also possible. So a, a user can belong to multiple work groups. A user can be part of multiple teams. So that also you can configure on the operator ID record. Next, let's go to the reports to column. So what is this reports to? So in real time scenarios, there may be instances where a particular user or an operator in Pega may be reporting to some other operator. So that configuration, you can do it over here. So this again will let you define a supervisor to the current operator that can be configured over here. Next comes the skill. So if you want to specify a specific skill to a particular operator ID or user, so that can be done by using this particular piece in the form and you can add multiple skills. For example, let's take an example that this particular training admin operator, this is specialized in, let's say, some skills called Pega. If you want to do that, so you can create a skill and you can associate the skill over here and you can tell the rating. Again, this is something that can be in a range of 1 to 10. Okay. Similarly, if you have specialized operators who are specialized in certain skills, so that configuration can be done by using the skill option that is provided in the operator ID record. Next, uh, there is a work queue and the urgency threshold. So you can define what all work queues or work basket this operator ID can access that you can define over here. And then the below three checkboxes that you see that is specific to the get next work settings or the criteria for this particular operator. So that I'll be taking a separate session on get next work and I'll be explaining these individual checkboxes, how it works in that section specifically. Now let's go to the availability portion of the operator ID. So there are scenarios where we take leaves, we are on PTOs and we have non-working hours. So if at all this particular training operator ID is unavailable for a specific period of time. So there is an option to define that on the operator ID. Okay, so let's say I am unavailable from 7th of this month to, I'm sorry, 7th of this month to, let's say, next Monday, which is 13th of this month. So I can configure my operator ID record and I can mark my available dates. So what happens if an operator ID is unavailable during a specific date? In, in that instance, you can also define a substitute operator ID. So when I, as an operator ID, is unavailable, there is an option to configure who will be my substitute operator, who will do the work on my behalf, to whom the cases will get routed to in my absence. So all those things you can configure over here. Again, it can be a direct operator ID or if you want a specific decision tree to be to be evaluated based on certain conditions to find out my substitute operator. So that is also possible. You can keep the decision tree over here and that decision tree will have the logic of finding the substitute operator, but this data will only be used when I as the operator ID is unavailable. Only then my substitute operator details will be used for different, different scenarios in our case life cycle. Okay. Next comes the security tab. So in the security tab of the operator ID, you can update your password and you have certain other security related settings, which we can check. 
Okay, that's pretty much about the operator ID record. I'll take a pause here. Now, next, next, let's go to the access group. So, what is access group? So, I already briefly touched upon the access group. So, access group will basically tell us which application we have access to and what all portals are there which we can access and also the roles. So, now one operator ID can have N access group and one access group will have one application and N roles. Okay, that is the uh, mapping, relationship mapping. So, if I try to open the access group for you, so first thing it will tell us is the application that we are talking about, which application you want to give access to. So, that we will define here and then the available portals. So, as of now, I have not created any custom portal. So, these are the default out-of-the-box portal that Pega provides us. And then you see the available roles. So, like I told you before, an access group can be tagged to one or more roles, access roles. So, these are the three access roles that is defaulted when the application got created. And this particular authors or admin operator ID or access group is having these administrator roles. If you want, you can create your custom role and you can add it over here in the access group record. Okay, so if I have to summarize, so one operator ID can have one or more access group. One access group will always be pointing to one application and one access group can be mapped to one or more access roles. So this is very important to understand. If you want, take a note of it. And this is going to be the base of all the security configurations that you will be doing in any of your Pega application. Right? And inside the access role, if you want to see what is there in the access role, so let us just open one of the out of the box access role. I'm sorry, I'm in a different application. So let me switch back to um, the training application. Okay, so from here, if I try to open one of the existing access roles, so one access role can have one or more AROs. So what is ARO? So ARO is also known as access of role to object and AROs are class specific. So if you want that this particular role will have certain authorizations on a specific class, so you need to create AROs for that. Okay, and uh, let, we'll go... Uh, deeper into this AROs and other security rules at a later point. But if you just want to see the overview of how an access role looks like, so it will have different AROs and it can be cloned from any existing role or it can also have dependent roles. Okay. So this is about access role. All right. So that's all for today's session. Thank you so much for listening in. If you have any questions, feel free to drop your comments and post the questions to me. Thank you. Have a nice day. Bye-bye.